ready. I'm just yeah. Actually, I'm ready. <laughs> All right, let's kick it off then. So we are here for the fourth and final installment of our uh, the complete Flow Trader series. This series is all uh, in anticipation and lead up to the Complete Flow Trader, which is the online course that we are launching one week from today. This is uh, the first time that uh, Wall Street Jesus, who is joining me for this webinar, um, has ever taught his methodology live in a course setting, um, and it will probably be the last time that he ever does it. So we will talk all about the course uh, later on here, but uh, we, will, we will certainly get to that. For now, we're here to talk about the top three mistakes that traders make when they start trading with flow. So the background to all this, guys, is that, you know, Jay is interacting with hundreds, if not thousands of traders on, you know, a, a, a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, both in terms of our, in the Steam Room, in our platform, in our community, um, and then certainly when you broaden out to Twitter, when you broaden it out to, um, uh, you know, live webinar, uh, free webinars and stuff that, that, that he does, it's insane, the volume of traders that, that he gets exposed to. And, you know, we talk about this offline all the time. He sees people making the same mistakes over and over and over and over. And so as we were talking about, okay, what are the most important things that we can put out there in the lead up to the series that would be a value for people, whether they take the course or not, you know, we always want to want to provide as much value as we can. Uh, we just said, why don't we count down the top three mistakes that people make and point them out for people so that they can stop doing them and, uh, and hopefully, you know, make better decisions instead. So, Jay, if you're cool with it, I will just walk us through each one, and uh, and then you can just break it down one by one. How's that? Yeah, sound? definitely. And I just I just wanted to share that um, we kind of had a you know Charlie and I were having a tough time nailing down uh, kind of the three most important per se because uh, they all you know I was telling you Charlie like one and two you know are pretty much in a broad way can cover so, so many others. You know, it's, it's tough mm -hmm. to pinpoint three, uh, but there is, the three have uh, something in common with each other, uh, which definitely make them in, important for people to know. If, they're, if, they're, if they have any intentions of trying to utilize flow and see if it would be any sort of asset or an edge um, in addition to what they're doing, uh, these are definitely some of the things you need to be aware of, you need to be conscious of. Yes, 100%. Yeah, I mean, we would never say that this is like a comprehensive primer on mistakes that you can make when you trade flow. I think we talk about some of the other things that people do in the other episodes of the series, which, you know, if you're watching the recording, um, you go to our YouTube channel, the Sang Lucci YouTube channel, and you'll see that that series right on there. You can watch the other three episodes. Those were those were great. Um but yeah, let's start. We'll we'll start with the countdown here, and Jay, you can you can break it down for everybody one by one. And for everybody, when you have questions throughout, which I'm sure you will, just do me a favor, put them in the Q and A section of the Zoom chat, and that way they're all there, and it's easier for us to organize. And we'll do a Q and A um, portion at the end of this. So, all right, number one, biggest mistake that people make when uh, we'll, 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 I'll kind of go backwards, but you know, number one on our list. Um, in terms of the most common thing that we see is that people do not distinguish between different types of flow, right? So they don't distinguish between a block versus a sweep. Jay, yeah, versus take it away. Me. Get, out, get on the soapbox. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say, because uh, just the way you phrased it and need them purposely do it, but I wouldn't put them in any order of importance here. You know what I mean? Mm. One is more mm. important than three and, and that sort of, sort of thing. We were just kind of trying to nail down uh, three of the more important uh, mistakes that flow, uh, traders make while flow, all right? Yeah. And what we mean by um, trying to utilize the flow for your particular style, um, you, you see many places, like for example, if you, we spoke about this in the prior webinars, right? If, if you're strictly a day trader, okay, you are interested in one thing and one thing only, and that is what 
is the market or the stock or whatever you're looking to trade going to do today? Now, right? It is irrelevant what the outlook may be a week, a month, even a couple of days from now, right? If you're strictly day trading and you're going home at the end of the day, naked, as we say, right? You're not holding anything overnight. Um, the only way, the only thing you're going to benefit from is something that's going to move today, okay? And, you know, I see a lot of times that uh, you, day traders will look at towards the wrong flow and get enticed by maybe uh, the size of the orders or just by the noise around the action, more people talking about it. Um, day traders will try to take advantage of flow that may be more for more suitable for you know swing trading or the longer term positioning or investing you know so a lot has to do with the strikes as as we talk about a lot right if you're a day trader you know if so if somebody's placing even a decent sized bet um but it's nine months out you know you're probably not going to see the type of momentum uh that you would like to see over the extreme short term, okay? And not even day trading. A, a very common mistake is that, uh, you know, players would, let's say somebody comes in and buys uh, March of next year calls, right? In size, couple million bucks, right? And very impressive action. Um, and, you know, I see a lot of times that players will tail the action and then the stock goes down a couple days later and they're frustrated, pissed off, and they're pulling the plug. You know, and you could see how that could be, that could be a problem, right? That the bet has nothing to do with the price action of that underlying over the next week or a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do. You know what I mean? Stock could go up, down, sideways, crooked for the next few months. That player went out that far for a reason, because you wanted to avoid, you know, that that in between the short term. And you know, you see a lot of times I see it way too much where players were. They get excited about the size of the action or the noise around the action and they tail the order and then they're selling it, you know, a couple of days later, two weeks up, down, sideways, crooked, you know, and then looking back on the action nine months later and, uh, you know, more than not, it works out and they get frustrated. But, you know, you have to, we, we talk about game plan, right? And I'm a big proponent, you know, Steam Room members know this. Uh, probably of myself more than anything else. You, you got to have some sort of idea or a plan when you come when you come into each and every day in this game. If you don't have it, um, you're just more inclined to make a lot more mistakes, and you know you're gonna be just more confusion. You know, more confusion, um, and that can lead to more mistakes. So, knowing what action is suited for you and your particular style and what you're looking to gain off the activity um, is one of the more important things, I think, uh, for anybody trading off flow. Okay, so that was, so you're talking about, so that's, uh, to be clear, that was rule, um, or sorry, mistake number two, right? We were saying, so they don't adapt it to their style. Is that, that's what you were just speaking to specifically, Jay? Yeah, well, yeah. that wasn't or, what you were referring to. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I talked about the, what, don't worry about it. I just want to make right. sure that I'm, that I'm with, I'm with you. Um, so yeah, so we, you know, this is something we definitely talked about a lot in the webinar with Lucci. Um, I mean, you're talking, what you just went through is a lot about timeframes, right? Which is obviously one component to, you know, to style, you know, and approach. I mean, do you think this also goes with, um, you know, looking at, okay, if you're a technical analysis, if you're coming from a technical analysis background versus a tapering background versus, you know, other styles of analysis, fibs or something like that, that people don't factor in, um, they don't adjust their perspective on flow, you know, with, with regard to the perspective that they have coming in, the methodology that they have coming in prior to that, or yeah, do you think it's and, mostly and about time frame? It has, it's not just time frame. It's, it's, it's the, again, the type of what, like you have, when you come into anything, right. And anything in, in life, not, not just trading, you know, you, you got to have a realistic sense of what you're looking to get from whatever it is uh, you're doing. Right. So when, it, when it comes to this, right, you have to have, like, you have some sort of belief of what you're trying to get out of the flow. What, what's your edge going to be? Right. And it all depends on 
how you're looking to combat it, right? If you're a day trader, it's intraday like we spoke about, swing trade, et cetera, okay? So knowing that, knowing what you need to look for, right? So you can attain that benefit is one of the more important things out there, you know? Because in my opinion, you're not getting, what I'm getting at is you're not getting the true edge out of the flow. You're not letting the flow do its job when you're not paying attention to the right stuff. That's that's what I'm getting at. Okay. Right. So if you're a technical trader, like you mentioned, right, you're looking at charts. A, a lot of um, traders I know who look at charts and utilize flow uh, as a confirmation indicator, they're more on the tactical side. Okay. So meaning short term. Okay. So they're looking for the flow to just like we spoke about in prior webinars to be solely a momentum indicator. Okay, mm -hmm. a confirmation indicator. They basically, they're just utilizing the flow to give them the nod that that technical pattern that they already did the homework on, the research on, is ready to go. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So example, for some of you who look at charts, you know, you got a stock that's setting up, looks like it's on the verge of a breakout, right? What are you waiting for? You're waiting for volume, right, to come in. Volume to come in and break that, that consolidation pattern, break out of that consolidation pattern. Um, that's where the flow and the right flow, sweeper activity, whatever the case, can provide, you know, a, a legitimate edge there. Because we talk about it, right? Sweeper activity is momentum, instant momentum over the short term. So if you're already as, you know, if you're a technician and you're already waiting on just volume to confirm that technical setup, you know, that's where flow would provide, you know, such a huge edge. And you, you want the flow that's going to create momentum now. So you would be looking for more of that tactical bet, that short-term bet, right? That's going to get people excited now, get the stock moving now, which hence would break the stock out technically um, on the chart you're looking at. So you, you see how it all, it, it goes together. So in other words, the opposite of that or the wrong way um, to look at that would be, again, like I mentioned, somebody, you know, buy something, but instead of sweepers coming in on a tactical basis, you know, somebody goes out and buys longer term or leaps on the stock, right? And no matter what the size is, that likely won't mean anything over the short term. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it kind of did nothing for your setup for what you were looking for. You understand? So knowing, understanding that, um, and I know like, you know, a lot of people who are used to flow, um, this is almost like a, a given to them now, right? They, they know this already, uh, but a lot, of, a lot of people I meet on social media and all, a lot of the newbies out there, uh, they, they are more drawn to the size of the order, uh, the more people are talking about an order or the name, right? A lot of times just the name, it's Facebook whatever bet in Facebook is going to get them excited, you know? Right. So it's right. knowing exactly what you need for what you're looking for um, is one of the more important things out there without a doubt. Right. So depending on your, your time frame, depending on your style, a certain order might mean something to you and it might mean absolutely nothing to somebody else. Exactly. And, in a, exactly. and in a way, both of you can be right. You know, exactly. it's not to say that, that anybody's wrong. It's just your style dictates what's a value and what isn't. And we often see people come in and they're like, what the hell? I basically thought that these, you know, that if I saw some go off in a name, that it was basically a buy signal, right? Like, well, you know, what, what's going and on? It's like, just well, to give a, a, an example out there, and especially those of you who are members who have been on the webinars um, could relate to this, okay? You hear me a lot, like the action we're seeing now. Uh, you know, you hear me kind of almost talk down about it, right? It's uh, speculative, cheap crap. You know, I use adjectives like that. You know what I mean? Um, because for me, for swing positions, I'm looking for that player who's going to make a bet on the company, the name, who's going to come into the option market and is just looking to utilize some leverage. He already likely has a, a accumulating a massive position in the equity. Okay, so that's the stuff I'm looking to build a position in and swing over the course of months, all right? But if you're trading tactically, right, if, you're, if you like looking at technicals and charts and you're looking for those momentum plays, 
the action we're seeing, even though it's quote unquote cheap and maybe garbage in weeklies, that's exactly what you want to see. You know, that's yeah. exactly what you want to see because you're looking for that trade, right? You're looking to play off the momentum. You're not, you, you couldn't care less what these stocks do three to six months out. You know, you're looking for something that's going to be a catalyst now. So, you know, that's a perfect example of what Charlie was talking about. Like, you know, for somebody who may be looking to swing positions and build positions, that flow I'm going to be disappointed about. But, you know, for those who are looking at chart setups and looking to just trade off the momentum, that's the ideal type of flow um, that you want to see in that situation. Does yeah. that make sense? I know I... Uh, you makes know, total sense. It, makes in, sense. In, it does? Okay, good. Makes sense to me, but you know, <laughs> but, but, you know, let us everybody in the chat. If you got questions about this, um, you know, hit us hit us up or put put something in the QA. Seems like most people are saying this this makes sense. Um, so okay. So I think that we we cover that one. So okay. let's go let's go to the next one. By so, accident, we cover that one. <laughs> yeah, we by accident we cover number two. So let's go back to number one, which is uh, treating all flow equally, right? So not okay. distinguishing between different types of orders, oh, you know, blocks versus sweeps. Orders. Okay, that's or, what we're talking about. Gotcha. Or, you know, and we don't have to, this, you know, uh, Jay, we're, uh, this is obviously the tip of the iceberg. A lot of this is what you're going to be teaching in the course, but distinguishing between different types of sweeps, right? It's not just like there's one sweep. There's a lot of different, you know, flavors right, to all exactly, this. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, speak a little bit to, to some of what you see people do when they come in and they're just like, hey, I saw a giant block trade go off. That's 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 momentum, right? That's going to ignite momentum. Like, let's let's do this. Let's buy, you know, and they, they don't distinguish between... Yeah, different this, uh, this different types of such, orders. This is such a, a deep topic and it, it's so important. You know what I mean? That it's it's going to be hard to touch on um, all of this and kind of give them a great sense of what I mean uh, of the importance of it. Okay. But yeah. just, I like to give examples because maybe you guys can relate off examples and understand it better. Okay. One of the most common mistakes, pro this is probably on the top of the list. Um, I see it with new members, not even new members, just members in general in the steam room, uh, social media is known for it. Uh, they, you hear, you guys hear me talk about initial activity uh, a lot. And what initial activity means for those of you who may not be aware of that term, um, it's when a name just starts to get the attention of sweepers. Okay, so when the buying just starts to heat up in a name, all right? And I talk about the importance of that and how that cannot be weighed the same as a name like, let's say, a Facebook that's been rallying for three straight weeks and just saw a sweeper number 85 over that three-week time frame. okay? Make sense? All right, so here's an example, right? Facebook, let's say we, we come in today, right? Facebook catches a, a round of solid sweeper activity, okay? Aggressive buying, Facebook's been consolidating, the flow's been quiet, there's been no action in Facebook. All of a sudden, we come in today, sweepers come in, right off the open, they start bombing Facebook, okay? That's initial activity, okay? That's where sweepers are just starting to get, recognize the name, they're starting to come after it, that's the initial activity. That's where, that's the sweet spot of the action in the name. That's where you want to find your entry per se, okay? Now, fast forward a couple days, Facebook has been rallied, let's say rallied every single day since the sweeps, a couple days out, and continues to see repeat sweeper activity, right? We see that all the time. A lot of times when the flow when sweepers just recognize a name, it doesn't end there. It continues to, you know, they continue to come after it as the momentum builds, okay? So fast forward, we're a couple days deep now, and all of a sudden, you know, Facebook is three, four days in a rally, and it's still seeing sweeper activity, okay? The, what I meant by this example being the most important, you cannot treat the activity we're seeing today right? And buy with the same type of risk management and approach it the same way as you would approach the action four days ago when it just started catching action at lower levels. 
Does that make sense? You guys yes. know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Charlie, don't shake too much. You're shaking the camera. <laughs> These kids. Sorry. Sorry. But the, honestly, does that make sense? You guys know what I'm talking about? I know most, again, most members do, but you cannot, you know, and just think of it logically, right? You can't weigh that the same way. And what a lot of times happens is, you know, people are coming to the steam room. They ignored the action in Facebook for the past four days. Okay. The stock didn't look quote unquote as good, right. As it does now. And now because Facebook is catching sweeper activity still, they think it's a buy and they get pissed when the stock runs out of gas tomorrow and goes into a little breather mode, you know? Oh God, all those sweepers yesterday. What the fuck happened? I don't understand all that sweeper activity yesterday and this stock is down today, you know, but what about the past five days of sweeper activity? You understand? Right. So you right. could see, you could see how you can really jam yourself up there. Um, not knowing, you know, where the end, where the initial activity took place. When did sweeper activity start to heat up in the name? You know, where was the stock at that time? Like, and, and I think a lot of people are just, I, and I don't mean this in a bad, as bad as it sounds, but lazy, right? They want, <laughs> they want flow to be this stock picking machine that spits out buys and sells, right? They want it as easy as, oh, Facebook's seeing call flow, buy. You know what I mean? Or Facebook seeing put flow, sell. It doesn't work that way. You know, it doesn't work that way. And yeah. nothing works that way in this game, obviously. But you can see by just understanding um, the example I just gave you in Facebook, understanding where initial activity took place and when to maybe stay away because it's tack on action, you know, a likely rolling involved because the stock's at higher levels, um, how that can, you know, have a great impact uh, on your P&L. Because most losers, Charlie, most losers, especially over a tactical basis, most losers come from chasing a name that's already moved and is, you know, 25 sweeps deep. You know, mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. losers come. And, and they scratch their head and wonder, and wonder why. And the reason is, you know, the egg hatched. It's done. You know what I mean? It's done. Right. And, right. and understanding that um, is really, really, I think it's crucial to finding success or, or trading off low. And even those of you who follow me just on Twitter, um, well, uh, Wall Street Jesus, by the way, a uh, little birdie, Wall Street Jesus, maybe, right? I think we I, think we might be coming back. Heard, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. But. Jack is uh, having feeling a, a little bad and having second thoughts about <laughs> suspending the Wall Street. Jesus. He's been he's been, he's been losing sleep over Wall Street Jesus, it, and so, you know the rat bastard. So he's uh, <laughs> we, we might get some good news, but yeah, I don't want to hold my back. breath like that. But yeah, anyway, yeah. those of you who follow me on Twitter, right? Um, you know, an easy approach to getting a grasp on that would simply be. All right, did you know? Did Jesus mention this name over the past couple of days, catching sweeper activity? Wow, I you know I haven't heard Jesus mention this name in quite a while. All of a sudden, he's talking about flow in the name, right? And you look at the stock; it's been consolidating, hasn't been doing anything. That likely is initial activity, and that's a, a ton. I mean, I can't stress to you how much better of a spot for an entry on a name than. You know, like I said, Facebook day 10 of sweeper activity. So um, yeah. having an idea of where, you know, where the flow's been in the name, you know, where the stock's been um, is really, really important. Okay. So, uh, so that was just one example, Charlie, of that topic you just mentioned, right? I mean, right. should I just roll quickly into uh, uh, just another one that I think you're trying to push me towards? Uh, sure. which is the different types of water flow. Um, yeah. uh, you know, another huge mistake in regards to that topic is just people setting scans. I mean, there are a million of them all over social media, okay, that are scanning for size bets, they assume, okay? So they'll see a $5 million, um, $5 million buyer of calls in NVIDIA, 
And all the ooh and an ah and will never stop after they see that order, okay? But again, you know, off the scan, it means absolutely nothing, right? First of all, if it's a block, the likelihood is it's either roll or tied to stock, replacing equity, okay? So now you assume the $5 million quote-unquote bet in NVIDIA is now stock replacement, which is neutral, not even, you know, directionally bullish, right? So, I mean, think about it. You're placing, when you're killing this action, you're placing a bet on that action and not, you know, having no clue, you know, what the actual order may mean. You, you know what I mean? So you could see how that could be a disaster, you know? Okay. Um, and, you know, as you guys know, I'm all about sweeper activity. You know, because that's the aggressive flow out there. That's the aggressive buying out there. Um, and a lot of newbies, you know, because of how popular flow has been with scans, et cetera, um, you know, they're looking at everything, you know. And let me just tell you this, okay? And Lucci hit on this in one of the webinars. You guys don't realize how much flow is out there. You know, how much... There's call buying and put buying, especially in the names you guys like. There's call buying and put buying every day, every day in these names, okay? 99% of that action is completely useless, completely useless, you know? In the steam room, we're trying to focus on the most aggressive of activity, you know what I mean? Out of all that action, out of all that flow, you know? And, you know, a lot of times in the steam room or even on Twitter, I'd be like, you know, somebody had mentioned, oh, Jesus, did you see that, that huge order, that huge, um, that huge bet in Facebook today? You know, and a lot of times it was a roll. It wasn't even a bet, you know? Right. Guys just moving positions around. And it, Charlie, it's so widespread right now because of how big options are. You know, I'm not going to start, uh, uh, taking shots at people out there, but just even on on television, you know, you hear the same type of lingo. Oh, five million dollar bet in X Y Z, and I'm you know I see it right in front of me. I'm pulling it up on Trade Alert, and the guy's rolling a position and actually taking profit off that order. Right. You know? so now somebody on CNBC is pushing this, getting all the riffraff excited about some $5 million bet in NVIDIA, and it's 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 profit-taking. The guy's taking profits. Yeah. You know what I mean? We, yep. You can make a bearish case of that. So, yep. you know, again, this topic covers so much. That's what I was trying to tell you before we got on the webinar, that we could just basically put this topic, and I can list, you know, 10 different subsectors of this topic. Um, where people, there's a lot of confusion and a lot of uh, mistakes being made. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's what a lot, you know, a good portion of the course is, is you going through and helping people like pointing out the landmines for people, right. And being like, don't step on this, don't step on this, don't step on this. Cause you've seen, you know, thousands of traders do it before. And you kind of backed us into that, to the third one there, which just so everybody understands, like the third mistake, I'll say it as clear as I can is, only paying attention to size of an order right. and and not not giving um, a greater respect to the type of order it is, the context of what the order means, the, what's been going on, the name, when that order comes in, you know, just looking at size and seeing dollar signs. Yeah, well, what's the old saying? It's like size gets the ladies? Is that, uh, <laughs> what, no. is that a saying? I like that saying. Whatever it is. But, you know, everybody... Everybody goes crazy for size. You know, that, that's all they care about. And some of my favorite action, and again, many people know this already, are the sneaky little rat bastard sweepers that come in sweeping 200 lots and don't want to be seen, you know? Yeah. And again, if you just take a step back and think of it logically, okay? You put yourself in the wise guy's shoes, Okay. If you're building a position in a name, all right, and you want to continue to accumulate in, in, the, in this name, okay, are you going to come into the market and go, bang, 
and let everybody and their mother know what the hell you're doing, know what you're buying. And now this thing gets on CNBC and they start talking about it. They start talking about it on Twitter. And now this thing runs away from you and you can't buy it anymore. Right? They would never want to do that. So when the sharp money, when the, when the smart money, they want to accumulate in the name, what they do is they, they piece in, they sneak in. They do it a lot of times, not when a stock is up and running and everybody wants to own it. Usually when it's dead or down and, and people are too scared to buy it, you know, and they keep coming back and they add and they add. And a lot of times the stock won't do much. You know what I mean? Won't do much because it's not getting the retail crowd excited out there, you know, and, okay. and that's the real positioning. That's the big boy positioning out there. You know, that's the stuff that we want to build positions and tell that action. You know, you understand right. what I mean? Yeah. If, yeah. If you're going to, if you're going to, if you're going to get in, if you're going to get on, on the, on, you know, the, the momentum that is being generated, like sort of in a dormant way from any kind of move, that's the kind of move that you want, right? A sneaky sort of slow build that you can also get in on at a good price before they get the Tony the the ponytail pump to, to make yeah. it pop, and then and then you know. And let me tell you this: from my experience, okay, and, and this these past year and a half has been is probably the exception. But prior to this past year and a half, any time there would be a four or five million dollar order, it I I, I wouldn't even have to look because I knew it wasn't clean. You know what mm. I mean? Because it, it likely was a negotiated block or it was tied to stock or it was a roll or there was something, you know, it was too good to be true. Now, believe it or not, the way this market is these days, um, since COVID, that you got some big money being thrown around. Like, you know, we're seeing legitimate $3 million sweeps out there that are clean, which, you know, you would never see before. But, yeah. you know, just to give you guys a sense that you very rarely will see all that size at once. And for that to be what you're hoping it is, you know, it, it usually isn't. And the best action is the stuff that sh they show commitment to um, and sneak into as opposed to just that glamorous size. And Jay, I think, I think one of the reasons why people kind of sometimes don't want to hear this, what we're saying is because they use the size of the order as justification for a bias that they already exactly. have in a trade, right? Exactly. So they they want to be able to tell themselves, come on, there's 5 million that just went off right. in this name. I think whatever, Facebook or, what, or whatever name it is, is going to the moon. Let me pull the trigger. And that psychologically is an ease, is a more comfortable place to be in than having to put in the work to put the flow into context, you know, and, and really understand what it means to let the flow dictate exactly. or, you know, whatever your methodology is to dictate what, you know, what positions you should be putting on. So, right. and, that, and that goes back to what we were mentioning. Listen, it all depends what you're using the flow for. Like for me, I'm just trading off sweeper activity and sentiment and, and there's nothing else. If a name doesn't catch a sweep, I'm not going to own it. It's that simple. So for me, what you just mentioned, the sweeper activity is going to dictate what I'm doing. You understand? No matter how much I like a name, I'm not buying it unless it catches sweeper activity. You know, You're a purist so, in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. So the best, the best action, the uh, the most success I find are names that I had no intentions of owning. You know, or weren't even paying attention to, but the flow forced me into buying, you know, where it got me to say, oh my God, somebody's getting aggressive here. You know, even though this thing might look like shit, I got to own it, you know, or even though I don't like this name, I got to own it. This guy's buying aggressive. So those are my best trades. But again, you know, I'm not saying you guys have to be that way, but just giving you, you know, giving you some perspective that, you know, you want to try to let the, the flow do the work, you know, if you're trading off flow. Okay, you want to let the flow. That that's where it's going to provide its sharpest edge for you. All right. If you're trading off, and I see even members do this. If you're trading off something else like technicals or whatever it may be, or you you know you're reading into the fundamentals or a story uh, on a name, and you see flow, 
and you're doing what Charlie said, sort of like confirming your bias, that's fine. But you can't blame the flow when it doesn't turn out the way you like. You know what I mean? If you're going to utilize the flow that way, you can't turn around and say, oh, God, what was that $3 million buyer in Microsoft doing? When, you know, it was a block and it didn't mean anything anyway. You understand? Right. So that's... you. I'm not Don't blame the flow just because you were looking for an excuse to pull the trigger no matter what. Yeah. What I mean, you're saying. yeah. If you're looking at technicals and you, you, you're kind of, you know, forcing flow to be what you want, you know, listen, if that's what you're doing, that's, that's on your plate. But you can understand it's, it's on your end. You know what I mean? It's on your end, right? If you're going to, that's why I say, like for a lot of Steam Room members, before they call it quits and give up, you know, give, Give it a shot to get to where I am, where you're ju just trading off the flow. Like if nothing's out, nothing else is working for you, you know, give it a shot and do what I'm doing and let the flow dictate, you know, what you're buying, where you're buying, etc. Okay, because if you don't, you're never, you never experienced, in my opinion, and again, I'm biased, but you never experienced the true edge out of flow, right? If you, if you didn't give that a shot. You know, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, what you're hitting on is this is like a common, this has been a common denominator for us as, as a business, as a family of, of, you know, service providers since we started, which is you have to understand and develop your own style and you have to do, you, you have to figure out what works for you. And Jay, one of the things that you said last in our last episode, that is such a big focus of the course is teaching the people who sign up, teaching your students what their fat pitch is and how to identify that meaty pitch for them. Because that meaty pitch, that fat pitch for you is very different, looks different than that fat pitch for Lucci. Of course, there's there's overlap and that Venn diagram, you know, between you guys. But that's something for, for anyone who's considering taking the course, and I'm, I'll go into details on it in a second, under, you know, one of the things you're going to be able to do when you come out of this course is be able to say, all right, I understand how to use flow to serve up the fat pitch for me to, to, to confirm for me that this is my pitch. This is the one I need to swing at, whatever that looks like for you in, in terms of whatever size you trade at. If you're an options trader, if you're an equities trader, if you're a scalper, if you're a swing trader, you know, there's so many different ways that you can slice and dice trading styles and account sizes and all that. But no matter what perspective you're coming from, Jay is going to give you the methodology and he's going to show you how to identify what is your fat pitch? How, you know, how, how do you, which ones do you need to swing at? And which ones do you need yeah, to let him go? What by? you need to pay attention to, because that's, see, a lot of people will hear what I'm talking about in just this webinar. And I, again, this could go on for hours and hours because flow, you know, is such a, it's a big game. It's a big game. There's a lot of action out there, you know? And they hear this and it's almost, it's overwhelming. You know, it's like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta realize if this is a clean, I gotta realize if this is a legitimate bet. Is it a hedge? Is it this? Is that? But that, that's the whole point. You know, once you get to a, a place where you know what you're looking for, you understand? And everything else don't mean anything to you. That's where... It, it really dumbs it down. It really simplifies things to a point where you can think clearly and you can actually see, you know, legitimately what that edge and how that edge can have an impact on, on your game. You know, yeah. you, yeah. Cannot, you cannot get to that place unless you know what you're looking for, you know, what you need to look for. And, um, you know, that's, that's the main objective. Like I said, as a course, the main objective, there, there's going to be stuff that for the, this point in time, the way you're trading means nothing to you, right? Maybe you change your trading style down the line and it may mean something at that point. But you're going to realize, coming out of this course, you're going to realize what you need to look for on a day-to-day -day basis, what, like Charlie said, what you're waiting around for and what... The other, why you need to ignore all the other stuff, why it doesn't mean anything to you. Yep. Well said. So I'm going to give, um, we got some questions queued up. I know you guys have, have stuff you want to ask Jay. Um, so I'm going to give a quick, 
rundown of the course for those who who haven't heard it yet. It launches in a week, so we're 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 coming down to this. This is the home stretch. We I've said this before. We we set aside a hundred spaces that are publicly available for this class for the for this course for people who can join it live. Um, I think on the site it's saying we have sixty five left, but this isn't even accurate because we have to update it from over the weekend. We're you know. People are signing up quick and they're going to keep signing up faster. So if you all went in, um, I highly suggest that you, you know, you grab your spot sooner rather than later. Um, and yeah, so we're starting in a week. We got, you get 10 classes with Jay. Everything you've seen in these public webinars, you know, is the tip of the iceberg. Of course, we're not going to give away any sort of secret sauce or anything in a public, you know, free setting as much free value as Jay already gives away. There is so much more beneath the surface, you know, to, to, to go into. So he's going to slice and dice everything from, you know, the fundamentals of flow, what it is, different types of sweeps, things that you should be paying attention to things that you should be ignoring, um, to breaking apart. How do you use flow in different styles with different approaches? If you're an equities trader, if you're an options trader, you know, basically everything that we just talked about, we also haven't talked about in this series really at all sentiment. Um, but sentiment, is an entirely different portion of this course that is huge, that is very related to flow. And Jay will be talking about how he leverages sentiment, how you can leverage sentiment, you know, in your trading to, to do that. He'll be showing you whether you're using flow, whether you want to use flow as a confirmation indicator, kind of like what Lucci does. You're coming in with another style. You want to add this on or whether you want to be sort of a purist like Jay and really let the flow solely dictate what you do. You know, you'll, you'll know how to do that coming out of this course. You also get three months of, um, of access to the Steam Room, which is our proprietary platform. We built this ourselves, um, you know, specifically because the, the, the environment that we needed to give our traders the best opportunity possible to make money, we couldn't get it from anybody else. We needed to build it ourselves. So you get the wise guy alert um, filter, which is basically our, our, our flow feed. This is entirely run by Wall Street Jesus and determined by Wall Street Jesus. Uh, you get our entire community in here who is, it, it's full of, you know, traders from all sorts of different backgrounds who are analyzing trades on a moment to moment basis, whether it's swing, scalp, you know, all sorts of different approaches, you know, in there providing an immense amount of value. You get a live broadcast with Jay, eight hours a day, nonstop audio and video, breaking things down for you. It's a, it's a huge amount of value. Um, that's this complete flow trader channel here. This channel is only available to our uh, to the members of this course. So it's a place for, for anybody who signs up to be in here, ask questions as basic as they are, as complex as they are, to have conversations in a private space and be you know, supported by our team as they go through that process. Um, what else do I need to, to hit on here? Let's see my list. Um, yeah, I mean, we've been doing this, we've been offering educational courses for complex, you know, professional caliber trading styles and approaches we've been offering courses based on these methodologies for for 10 years now as you know saying luchin wall street jesus's business we are good at what we do i think we have a household name and the reputation um, and household reputation in this space for a reason so if you are ready to really kind of go beneath the service beyond what you can find for free on youtube tutorials and stuff like that and really get exposure to someone like wall street jesus who's been doing this for 20 years, he spent more time looking at flow and thinking about this shit than probably many of you have been on this planet. And I'm not even exaggerating when I say, when I say that. that. The dude that really never stops. Feel, that really makes me feel young, John. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, man. That's what I'm here for. So, um, you know, you're getting access to an immense amount of expertise and, and, um, and perspective. And we've consolidated it all into... 10 classes for you. So this is going to be a kick-ass kick experience. This is really your only shot to get in with it live. Uh, starts up in a week. Highly suggest you, you hop in on it now. If you guys have questions, shoot us an email, contact at, uh, at wallstreetjesus.com or just go to wallstreetjesus.com and use this little intercom button right there, that little help chat, and we'll get you, uh, we'll get you sorted out. All right, let's get some questions because we got a bunch um okay so we got one from daniel uh what percentage of the time jay uh would you say flow provides a genuine edge in the market jay 
it's kind of a tough point. Again, it, it depends on um, how you're using it. You know, if you're, I mean, if you're just solely looking to make place bets off, you know, top quality flow, uh, you know, top shelf type action, you're going to see a, a really high win rate. You know what I mean? If you're an aggressive player on more on the tactical side, obviously, you know, you're going to run into more losers. Um, you know, there's, there's so much that goes into it. The more active you are, the more flow you're trading off of, obviously, um, you're, you're, not, you're not looking for just the cream of the crop. You know what I mean? So if you're sticking with the cream of the crop, you know, that, those are the goods. If you have the discipline to do so, I, you know, I would highly recommend it. Uh, but most of us have that degenerate blood and, you know, can't sit tight waiting for that type of action at the right time all the time. You know, it's not an easy thing to do. So yeah. it, it depends on um, it depends on your style and, and what you're looking to gain from the flow. But I will say this, like, the way I look at it is the sweeper activity for me is the where, okay, and the what, where the hot money is. What's the smart money buying? You know, um, where's the momentum right now? That's sweeper activity. And the sentiment is the when part, you know, that tells you when the risk reward is favorable and when it's not, you know, so you could see how the two put together, uh, when you apply the two together, uh, make a deadly combo, right? If you if you have an edge on where the hot money, the smart money is playing, and sentiment's going to give you an edge on when the risk reward is worth your time to risk your money, you know that that takes a lot of a, a lot of the risk out of the game. You know, it takes a lot of the yeah. risk out of the game. So uh, leveraging sentiment on top of it. Is what yeah, you're that, that's yeah. that's the way I look at it. You know, but. And it's a tough question to ask because, again, if you are, let's say, like we were talking about earlier, what Charlie was talking about, if you're trading off charts, okay, how successful you're going to be is really, I have no idea. I mean, how good of a technician are you, right? Are you, are you a decent trader already? I mean, do, do your technicals work? Do you have conviction and co high confidence in the technical work you're applying? You know, if so, I think... You know, sweeper activity can be a powerful tool, you know, but if you're struggling to find any consistency using technicals, you know, then it's going to be a, a lot more difficult on your end, even with sweeper activity. You understand? So it's right. how you're using it and, and what you're looking, you know, what, what you're looking to use it for uh, and where you're going to find the answer to that question. But, you know, again... And this is something we're going to touch on, like, in, in depth in, uh, during the course, right? You get, like, we talk about sweet spot and ideal setups. And that's what, like, we're going to do in the course. We're going to, I'm going to paint the picture to you of the ideal picture-perfect sweet spot setup in regards to sweeper activity and sentiment, all right? And what you're going to learn trading off of that, the further you move away from that that example right the the further you move away from those characteristics of that sweet spot you know the more likely you're going to have you're going to find more risk you're going to find more losers etc you know and that's what you're going to realize that's what you're going to tinker with um at least that's what i did that's what you're going to play around with uh to figure out you know how aggressive you want to be when do you want to be aggressive? When you don't want to be aggressive, you know? I know, listen, I know a lot of players out there who trade off this stuff we're talking about who don't mind losing. You know what I mean? They want to be active. They know there's going to be losers, but they know big picture-wise that they have enough confidence in their money management skills that with this edge they're going to find green. You understand? They, 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 they know that already. So they don't mind running into losers. They don't mind taking on additional risk, playing off more action. You understand? Now, if you're the opposite of that, 
you know, that's something you got to find the discipline to stay away from, right? You got to be more selective. You got to wait around and be patient more. You know, being patient is, I mean, the, one of the most important things in this game is being patient and waiting for things to line up. You know, if, if you got that degenerate blood like I do and many of you do. Um, I think I think that that's a really important note to hit on too, uh, Jay. And I'm not, I would never say that you are going to explicitly walk people through some sort of step-by-step process of how to be patient. Um, but one of the things that we say that, that we get in terms of feedback from people when they take the course, whether it's, you know, when they learn from you, whether they take it from Lucci or Chris Katie or Ronchero, is just exposure to somebody who has developed themselves so much as a trader you pick stuff up through osmosis. You learn just, just by kind of being in the same virtual room from them for that amount of time, you pick up on how they're able to do things that you want to emulate, to be disciplined, to have patience. And Jay, that is one of the things that people always talk about with you is how patient you are and how just watching you trade and hearing you talk about things and, and it's just infused in your into your perspective uh, people pick up on that and they're like, I feel like after being around this guy, you know, for a little bit of time, I know how to be more patient too. So that's, that's another reason why we, you know, we do these courses live, you know, we, we want you all to, to be able to get that kind of level of exposure to, to someone and, and like you, you. I, I would say, listen, and, and I know exactly what you're saying. And like, I, I always, I, I, I almost don't like hearing it because when people talk about, oh, how disciplined you are, and and they really don't understand the real me. The I think the best attribute that I got, the best characteristic I have is I'm a realist. You know what I mean? I, I'm honest with myself. And I think you you have to be honest with yourself in this game. Otherwise, you got no shot. Okay? And I probably shouldn't be saying this. And most members, I've, I've said this to um, over and over on, on member w- webinars, etc. Most people who you may subscribe to or offer a course would never say it. I have zero confidence in my trading, quote unquote, trading skills. Zero. I'm being honest. Zero. I am, I would be an emotional catastrophe, a menagerie out there if I had to rely on my trading skills. Okay, but I'm also a realist. You know, I I told you, I came to that crossroads in this game where I had to do one of two things. Either I had to hang up the cleats or I had to figure out a way for me to make money consistently in this game, right? Put in, figure out certain parameters that will allow me to be successful in this game without relying on my emotions that would get the best of me at all times. Okay, and... You know, being real with myself, understanding that, listen, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Nine out of 10 traders don't make it in this game. You guys, I know a lot of you young guns out there. I'm the next next Jesse Livermore, whatever that dude's name is, who committed suicide. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, I'm this. I'm Paul Tudor Jones. Don't worry. I'm, I'm going to be this type of trader. You know, I'm going to do this for you guys don't realize that the numbers are stacked against you. I don't care how many fucking courses you take, how much you Google the subject, okay? The odds are against you. Nine out of 10 of you will not be able to trade off your own emotions and the instincts in this game. It's it's just it's just how it is. Okay. So that's so when you said that you don't want to rely on your trading skills, you mean your emotions and your instinct. You're like, I need to rely on something else like flow to well, help you know like, listen, okay i guarantee you like again most young people who come into the game they're like oh, yeah they have the attitude oh i'll trade anything i'll come in here i'll trade bitcoin i'll trade shit coin you just give me a market and i'll trade you know i'll trade whatever long short it doesn't matter you know and that's what i mean that you the likelihood is you're gonna run out of money and will not be around long in this game Okay, that's when they say nine out of 10 traders will never make it in this game because we're not wired that way. You understand? We're wired the total opposite way. So there's not many people who who can do that and deal with the stress and the aggravation and the emotions and find consistency. Okay, 
So what I'm saying is by realizing that and being honest with myself and not ashamed of it, okay, what I do now is I'm relying, what, the way I look at it is I'm relying on the signals, okay, that allow me to do the right things. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? It's not yeah. me doing the, the 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 mind work, the thinking work, right? It's you'll you'll never say you'll never hear me say I don't or I won't say it a lot. I feel or I think this is going to happen because to me that means nothing. That means absolutely nothing, right? What I what I think and feel is completely useless to me, you know. So it's as simple as. If there's a sweeper getting aggressive and it's the type of action I know that I'm looking for, you know what I mean? Because again, that comes with experience, obviously, but I have the conviction and confidence that, you know, this is legitimate action. This is coming from the money who knows how to make money in this game. Okay. That's all I need to know. You understand? Yeah. It, it, what I think about it means nothing, it means absolutely nothing. And, and that's what I mean. Like the sweeper activity now, if, Charlie, if there's not aggressive, if there's not the type of flow that I need to see to push the buy button, I'm not doing it. That's my discipline. Right. You understand? That's discipline. That's, That's discipline. my discipline. And, and okay? you, and, and I feel like, you, like the humility that you have to say that, like after having put in the amount of time and the hour, you know, insane amount of experience that you have trading, you're still humble enough to say, I don't, like this isn't, me doing this this isn't me having some like incredible instinctual read on markets where i can just no predict way. where things are going i am dis i the reason i'm doing this i'm still doing this successfully is because i follow a system you know i've i've you know and and i've and i learned how to do this sustainably for me psychologically and i think that's one of the things that people who are newer to the game don't think through they they're like oh maybe i can white knuckle my way through this for another two years and, you know, make incredible money. Whereas people who are thinking about this as a long-term five, 10, 20, 30, 50 year endeavor, they're like, how am I going to do this so that I sleep well every night and right. I'm, I can go out and like, and, and have dinner with my, you know, spouse at night and not be a complete wreck. Like, how can I do this sustainably? And I think that's what you're, what yeah, you're speaking and, to. And, and that's what it all comes down to. You know, I'm, I'm not afraid of, like, if when I lose money off the right action, right, I, it, it doesn't bother me, you know, it doesn't bother me. And, and people sometimes can't understand that because I know, you know, more than not over time, I'm going to make more money than I lose, you know, based off experience. You know what I mean? I know if I'm playing the right sweeper activity at the right time, if I continue to do that, I'm going to make money. You know, I don't have a doubt in my mind about that. You right. understand what I'm saying? But, yeah. you know, if it was me going out there, making the, the decisions, what to buy, what to sell on a day-to-day -day basis based on how, I, on how I'm feeling that day and what I'm thinking about that day, it'd be the complete opposite. You know what I mean? The complete opposite. And think about how that could have an effect, right? You run into a couple bad trades you know how you get emotionally. You and Chris Katie, you talk about that stuff all the time, right? It weighs right. on your mind now, right? You're scared to buy. It weighs on your mind. But, like, for me, that's not a major issue anymore because I'm not relying on my mentality, how my myself. You understand? Having the hot or cold hand. I'm dealing with the, the action. You understand? I'm dealing yep. with the flow. Yep. And you've I'm taken, you've, you've, you've deburdened yourself in a way. You, you've unburdened yourself in a way. You've simplified it. Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly, exactly. And, you know, again, a lot of people probably don't want to hear because they want to strive to be the trader. You know what I mean? But whether you like it or not, guys, all of you are going to come to that crossroad I keep referring to. I guarantee it at some point in time. And you're going to need to be honest with yourself at that point in time. And remember what, you know, the discussion we had on it, because it will make things understandably a lot easier. And as long as you're honest with yourself, you can get past that point. If you yeah. are thick headed and you keep just, oh, I'm just going to keep firing. I'm not a quitter. I'm just going to keep good. 
you, you're not you're not going to end up anywhere. You're going to end up broke. You know what I mean? You can end up broke or stressed out and um, out of the game anyway. But or, or, yeah, that, or that's basically that, that sums everything. I don't know how we even got into this topic, but that sums up, you know, how I got to the point where I am right now. And, you yeah. know, the shortcut for me, Charlie, was the gambling aspect, you know, coming from that gambling background. Right. It was the same thing, like because I was around it. Degenerates will bet the ball games all day long. They never make money. Bookies salivate off their action. You know what I mean? They get yeah. hot sometimes. They'll hit six straight winners. They think they're the next top handicapper, and then they'll lose the next 20 straight. You know what I mean? And be an emotional wreck. They got no shot. But there are legitimate pros out there that are wagering on these things for a living who never worked a day in their life. You understand? <laughs> And if you took the pride out of it and stopped trying to handicap your own games, if you had access to these games and played just these games, you would be, you know, you would be profitable. You would be successful. Yeah. And, you know, that's that kind of, that was a preview, right? That was a prelude of getting into this game. So I kind of had a head start on that mentality of uh, coming into this game from the gambling world, which is the same shit. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, let's do one more there. I, I want to take this question because I think this is a really good question. That's kind of at the heart of a lot of people's questions when they, when they come to this is, and then, and then we can, uh, and then we can adjourn. Um, how does flow maintain its edge? If most edges in the market just dis get discovered and go away? Well, most edges, like when you think about other edges in this market, you know, other systems in this market. Um, I don't know if you're like referring to based off technicals or big, it, it's not an obvious buy or sell. If you think of it, like it's somebody who's interpreting, almost like interpreting tape, right? Like kind of what like Lucci does, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's not an edge that's going to get washed away per se, because it's not, I'm trying to think of the word, because I know what he's trying to give the example. He's trying to give an example like uh, statistics that may work over a course of time. And then, you know, people catch on to it and then it gets worked out in the market. It doesn't work anymore. You know what I mean? Right. The arbitrage goes away. Yeah. Right, right. Reading flow, reading tape is not that type of edge. You know, like you, you got to have the ability to do it. You got to have the experience to do it. It's, it's not, not easy edge. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not something that, you know, you can bring a trader in who um, is buying AMC and have them read the flow and have the same interpretation. So it's it's kind of a, a different type of edge um, than I think you're referring to. Yeah, it requires work. It requires, I mean, it's the same reason that you just articulated it, but tape reading, you know, I mean, there, there are fundamental principles as to why you know, in terms of market dynamics of why flow and tape reading provide you an edge. But it's also from the perspective of the number of people who are doing it. Um, and therefore the number, how many, how the efficient market theory would sort of apply to this in terms of, you know, a huge number of people crowding in and utilizing that specific methodology. Um, that doesn't happen because it takes work, it takes time. And that's part of where the edge in this comes from is, um, is y'all being willing to put in some work you know well, people who people don't in our who come to our community and who thrive within our systems are not people who are saying to themselves i got 15 minutes a week and i'm trading from my phone and you know i, I want to make 20 percent of my account on a on a weekly or monthly basis right the people who thrive within our within our systems are people who are taking this really seriously who are willing to put in work who are willing to put in the time who have a vision of doing this you know, independent from often from their day job or in, um, or, you know, in addition to their day job, but with a, you know, a significant amount of time. Um, and the number of people who are willing to do that out there in the market for, which is, this is a benefit to you guys is actually not that much, but a lot of people are lazy. A lot of people don't want to put in the work. So if you're willing to put in the work, you know, there's edge there. Yeah, and, and let me say this, Charles, not to cut you off, but yeah. it, and so it's not that everybody's lazy. Some people don't even have the time, right? Yeah, Some people yeah, 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 for sure. To yes, do it. Yes, and yes. that's fine. Again, as yeah. long as you're honest with yourself and you understand, listen, I, I just don't have the time to, you know, just rely on profits from my trading account. 
um, and retire, right? So it's something you're doing on the side, but you can still you could still make money off of it. You know what I mean? Like it, it, you could still benefit from sweeper activity off of it. I think that's that's the most beautiful thing out of sweeper activity. Again, I'm biased. Is that no matter what time frame, no matter part time investor, active day trader, there's there's an edge in it for everybody. But again, it's the ability to know. Okay, here's my edge. This is what I need to pay attention to. Right. right. This is what's going to make me money. Because, you yeah. know, I, I just, the reason I say that is I don't want people to get, some people to get the wrong impression. Some people who do this part-time and think like they can't find success. I know more people who do it part-time in addition to an occupation, a profession, that do it on the side, that find success, then do it full-time, to be honest. You know, so for, you, can, yeah. you yeah. can make money and it can be really beneficial uh, for part time yeah, I, de I definitely didn't mean to say, you know, hey, you either got to commit to eight hours a day on this or, or you're screwed. Um, right, right. I guess I guess how I was distinguishing it is like, if you even if you're doing this part time, even if you're only trading, you know, actively for an hour a week, you have to have some level of commitment to understand how flow works, you know, yeah. to, under to, 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 to understand the edge. What I'm talking, I'm contrasting that with edge that comes from some new indicator that for you know a month or something actually works as like right. a legitimate buy signal right you yeah, see this thing if it crosses points, this line yeah, exactly. boom you know go those edges when it's, if money is that easy exactly. yes the arbitrage will go away the market is too competitive it's too efficient and i think that's what dan yeah. was referring to earlier stuff like that like anything yeah. that works will uh, get washed out but exactly exactly exactly, exactly. all right guys um if you want more in-depth, you know, you, you want to go deeper than this. The complete flow trader is is the answer for that. We start up in a week. We're very excited to to, to kick it off. Um, we hope to see many of you in there with us. Wallstreetjesus.com. Um, go check it out and sign up if you're ready. And that's what we got. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you guys stopping in all the time. I just want you guys to know that. All right. Yep. Enjoy the night. I'll see most of you tomorrow. Mañana. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Jay. Later, Charlie. As always. Have see a good man. night.